Tell me how you see this market developing. I mean, as you say, cybersecurity is a growth market. It's, it's, it's a constant problem. We had a hacks in China yesterday with a million data uh, arriving online. It's a, we, we hear news of things like this on a regular basis. Uh, but how do you see that battle with, uh, with hackers going? Uh, because it's, it's a constant ongoing one. And, and how do you see your model in the competitive landscape and the development of, this, of the approach towards cybersecurity uh, as, a general, uh, as a general proposition? Well, I think when you look at our approach and the, and the battle, um, the, the adversaries continue to evolve and, uh, you know, we evolve and, and we continue to strengthen our technology and our lead. Uh, a big part of what we're focused on is stopping breaches. That's a lot different than stopping malware. So when you think about legacy antivirus technologies, the MACV, the semantics, the trends of the world, a lot of that is focused on stopping malware. We're focused on stopping breaches and it may seem similar, but there's vast differences. And overall, we believe if someone's buying security, their outcome should be stopping a breach. So we have the ability to do that. We've got 22 modules. Uh, and a big part of our competitive moat, if you will, is the 7 trillion uh, security events that we capture per week that we use to train our AI models uh, to come up with better detection, better prevention capabilities to stay always one step ahead of the adversaries. Where are all the, the most breaches coming from, George, in this current environment? Is it just strictly sovereign actors or are there other nefarious groups that you're noticing that the trends that are increasing? Because obviously you would expect there to be more attempts at breaches when people are obviously struggling under these financial conditions at the same time. Well, it's a great question. And uh, just to simplify things, we break down the threat actors into three groups. You have your nation state actors, Russia, China, etc. Uh, you've got e-crime, which has been booming. And then the third one is hacktivism. Obviously, with uh, some of the world events, you see more hacktivism type uh, activities. But let's focus on e-crime for a minute, which we've seen a dramatic increase. One of the changing pieces uh, that we've seen just over the last number of months uh, is a change in um, the way the adversaries are focused on getting in the companies and not, not simply just uh, encrypting the data, but using an extortion technique combined with um, this ransomware approach. And in fact, what we've seen is many of these uh, e-crime actors are actually skipping the ransomware piece. So instead they're leaking data and then they're extorting uh, companies and organizations to pay a ransom so that that data doesn't get published. And if you think about why that is, many companies have gotten better at restoring from backups. So when they weren't paying the ransom, the, the, the e-crime actors were simply saying, okay, well, if you don't pay the ransom to get your data back, we're just going to leak the data. And they've just started to skip that step. And, and now they just leak the data. Or they get paid or they leak the data. So we, we've seen that over the last number of months.